welcome back to Stone Magpie. I thought it was time to do a small project. So I've decided to show you how to do a pendant. What you will need is pendants, some leftover diamonds, some tape, some scissors and a pattern. And you may want to get some trays as well. I'm going to use, I'm going to put each colour into a different tray just to speed things up a bit. So let's start looking at the pendant themselves. I bought these on Amazon quite a while ago now. Um, so I'll put the link in the description, but do please be aware that you may be able to find it at a different price if you search on Amazon anyway. So in this pack, open it up you get five different colors each one has like a glass cover so that if you wanted to glue a picture in the base you can glue the glass cover in as well to keep it finished we're not going to use the glass covers because the diamond paintings themselves are nice and sparkly and give a good finish so the colors that I got in this pack are gold bronze, antique gold, antique silver and bright silver. I hope you can see the difference between those two. One's sort of a greyer finish and one's a more bright finish. Can you see that? You can probably tell that way around. Okay so today I'm going to use the antique silver one. I will measure this so that um, you can have a little look around if you want to for the same size. So the drop down is 50 millimetres and the width is about 27 millimetres. Of course the internal dimensions will be slightly different because there is a rim around the outside. Okay. So the first step is to get some tape. Right, now this tape you may well recognise from, if you've watched my 3D experiment videos, this is the tape I talked about, which is a very strong tape. It's called Mammoth Tape. Again, I got it on Amazon, so I will put the link in the description box, but please do a search as well. You may get a better price. Okay, now with this tape, what I do is I measure sort of just by eye, making sure that it's not right to the top because it's got to fit on the internal measurements. So I do a little guesstimate, say, okay, I think it'll be around about here and do just a little snip in the side. We'll cut that off. It doesn't matter that I've snipped the end a bit because it will all um, just sit in the pendant base anyway. Now this is slightly too wide for this pendant. It looks okay but I always cut a bit off because it needs to lay flat on the base. If it's lifting at the sides at all the diamonds will not sit properly. So if I turn this tape over you may be able to see there's like a mesh pattern on the back and that's to give it a bit of extra strength as well. I cut off two millimetre worth of the little squares all the way up. Okay, now you can keep that for something else or you can just pop it aside and put it in the bin. At this point, I make sure that the tape side goes down so I can see that it's going to fit well. Doesn't matter about the gapping down the side, but if that was to go right to the edge and lift up, it would be a problem with the diamonds laying. So I'll turn that round. I'm going to use this end so that that can lay properly once it's in. And I just gently maneuver it away from the sides. Okay, and then do a press down with my nails. That's why I never have good nails because I'm always using them. <laughs> Things like this. Right, 
I'm going to get my tweezers just to lift up the edge here. Let's see if we can get this backing off. This is probably the trickiest part. <laughs> I'll try my nails. I still think even though this bit is a bit tricky, it's worth putting it down with this backing still on because this tape is so sticky. You're just forever getting stuck to it. <laughs> right, so peel the backing off and it's ready for your diamonds. Now, when I did two of these pendants in the past, I put a double layer of tape on. I'll show you the pendants I made. I did like a dog tooth design and like a cameo effect, um, like a camouflage. I put two layers of the tape on so that it would sit higher up on the pendant base. Okay, so if you like that effect, then do another layer on the top there. This time I'm going to try and sink them in a bit more. Um, so I'll just do the one layer. Right, we'll refer to my pattern. Now I know from doing the two pendants before that I need 19 diamonds up and 10 across. So I've drawn out, I printed out some graph paper, I drew the shape and then I coloured in with just some coloured pencils a design and I like the old fashioned Tetris game. So I thought that uses nice colours and all of these white colours in the background will be black. So hopefully it will look like the shapes dropping down. Okay. So now we've got the prepared pendant and we've got the pattern that we're going to make. The next stage is to sort the diamonds out. You could just do them from the pots, but um, I'm going to put them in some trays just for speed so that I'm not, um, you know, forever tipping them out during the video. So I've got black, which is number 310. I've got a beautiful bright green, 702. I've got a yellow, which is 165. I've got an orange, look at that bright orange, beautiful, 741. I've got a beautiful bright red, I've not got many of these ones left. And it is number 347. You don't have to stick with these numbers. You can use whatever diamonds you have in replace the colours that I'm doing. So don't worry about that. We've got a bright blue, number 158. And lastly, we've got number 996, which is like a turquoisey pale blue. Right, so they are all our diamonds sorted out, ready. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you for joining me. Thank you to my subscribers. I do appreciate every one of you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do click the button, button below. It is free to subscribe and if you click the bell, you will um, be notified when I post a new video. Right, do you know, I don't think I've included what in the what we need bit, a pen and some wax. <laughs> See me? So yes, you will need a diamond pen and some wax. Sorry about that. Just filling my pen with wax here. And what we're going to do is start in the bottom right hand side. Okay, so if 
following my pattern, we need a turquoise. And I'm just going to stick it right in the corner. And then following the pattern along, I'm going to need three black. So one, two, three. Now you'll see that I'm using the square diamonds. When I've given out the numbers across, it might be different if you're using round. So please be aware of that as well. You may need to do a quick measure, a little test before the tape goes in to make sure that you've got um, the right numbers across, etc. So one yellow, then two black. And all I'm doing is following that pattern that I have printed out. So next I've got two bright blue. And then finishing with one black in the corner. So that's the first row done. So I'm just making sure I can see this properly. Just make sure the first row is all in correctly. Okay, because then obviously that sets the the next level and so on. Right, so I'm going to get a pen. And I'm just going to tick off. And I've completed a row just as a tally. So turquoise, need two turquoise next row. So one, two, then one black. Three yellow. Can you see three yellow? One, two, three. Then one black. One bright blue and two green. One, two, squish those in. Okay. Don't really like the placement of that second green one. I've got pink wax coming out of my pen now. Get rid of that. Okay, that's better. Tick off that row. Then we go into the next row. So one black, one turquoise, one black. Sorry, that fell off. Didn't place very well. Try and get that off. And try that one again because it dropped off. Okay. That's better. So we're up to an orange. And I've got three black. One, two, three. And I've got a bright blue, a green, and then a black. So hopefully you'll be able to see that the shapes are starting. Dear. The shapes are starting to um, to be formed now. If you played Tetris, you'll see. There's one of the shapes. 
there, there. Okay, and the black is really making these colours pop. Right, so we can tick off that line. And next we're going to do two red. So the red is the box shape. Making sure that they're sitting properly. Before I continue, do a black. An orange. A black. Then four orange, because that line is going horizontally. Because if you remember in Tetris, you used to be able to turn the shapes. And then a black. Do you remember when you used to get some rows and they used to disappear? And then as they moved up towards the top of the the game, it would be very stressful <laughs> trying to get them all out. All right, I'm not sure if they're sitting properly because I can't see it that well with... That's not too bad actually. Okay, so tick that one off. And what you're doing, you're just continuing up, following the pattern and placing the diamonds in, in that order. I'll do one more row and then I might well speed it up for you so that you're not having to watch every little diamond be placed. So there's the box shape. One black, one orange, one black, and then I've got two reds. So that's there. And then I've got three black. So you're just following your chart. All right. Okay, at this point, I will speed up the video and then you'll be able to see it progress. Okay, so that's now the design in the bracket and it uh, looks really effective, doesn't it? When I bring it up closer, you may be able to see just a teeny weeny weeny little gap across here. It's so small, you can sort of just try and push the diamonds up a little bit, but I don't think when you look at it face on, you can tell that clearly. Um, when you've seen me press along the side here, it's because the tape underneath is quite bouncy. So I'm just firmly pressing it so that um, they stay in place. Um, some of them have bounced up a little bit like that one there. So just click it back into place a bit um, and it should stay fine. I do quite like the fact that it is a bit more um, inset than say my dog tooth one. I'll just get that. Can you see the difference there or not? Um, this one is much higher than this one because they reflect so well off the sides it's hard to to see but um, if you look here can you see how that is a bit more inset 
know if you can tell or not really. And that one is higher. Hmm. Not sure if you can see the difference. <laughs> there we are. You can definitely see it in real life, as it were, but um, yeah, I quite like that inset. Now, going back to these glass covers, of course, um, they are quite thick. Get one out for you. So one, one side is flat and the other is curved. But if you were to try put that in there, I think it spoils the overall effect. But it's up to you. If you wanted to, you could. You could just glue it in. So I think I prefer it without. I don't think it needs it. They are all firmly in. So when you wear it, I don't think it would get damaged. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope that you feel like you could have a go at it. Um, make your own design or copy mine, don't mind. Whatever you do, please do enjoy it and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.